Hey, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Emilio and we are going to be talking about IT support, specifically level one, level two, level three of IT support, IT administration. We're going to talk about the differences between one, two, and three, the different skills, the different uh, roles, the responsibilities in each of these, perhaps the different IT titles, you know, job titles that people will have in these three levels. And hopefully I give you a bit of an understanding. Perhaps you're confused around what the differences are. Perhaps you're in one of these level one, two, or three, and you're looking at moving to a different level. Uh, So hopefully this gives you a bit of an overview. Uh, But before we do get into that, please subscribe. Click on that uh, button on the bell so that you don't miss any of my video releases. So you're either in the IT industry, you're either looking at getting into IT, perhaps you're somebody in HR or some management position and you want to understand what is the difference between a level one, a level two, and a level three IT professional. Now, before we even begin defining these three levels, uh, just be aware that they can vary depending on the company, depending on the size of the company, whether if it's a small, a medium, a large business, depends on the type of company it is as well, because some companies may have level one, level two, level three. Other companies may not have such a definitive change between a level one, two, and three. Uh, There could be bleed, you know, sort of crossover between all of these roles. Some companies, if they're smaller, may only have one or two IT people taking on multiple responsibilities between a level one, level two, and a level three. So as long as you're aware of that, it can change from company to company. The definitions can change from company to company. But my experience having worked in IT for a very, very long time, having worked in a lot of different companies, I have seen many combinations. So hopefully I can give you some ideas and give you my best definitions for the differences between a level one, level two, and level three. So level one is somebody who has perhaps only just entered the IT field. Perhaps they've just graduated. You know, they've just got themselves their university or college degree, whatever it may be, maybe a couple of certs under their belt, and they're just starting off in IT. That may not always be the case because I've met a lot of level one people that really like that level one role and they like to just stick with that even though they've been in the industry for a long time. But generally a level one will be a help desk person or a service desk person. So you can sort of have those two roles interchangeable. Uh, Somebody who looks after the help desk, somebody who is managing the help desk or managing the service desk. So they don't have to be super, super skilled in IT. They should know the basics of IT to be able to provide basic levels of IT support. They're gonna be perhaps on the phone, picking up phone calls from the end users, from a user in a company, right, or users in another company. So for example, if they're working in a managed services provider, you know, performing IT support for other companies, they could be the very first point of contact for an end user, for a customer. They're calling up, they have an issue with their computer, right? The level one person will try to troubleshoot and try to fix that issue if they can. They could also be doing things such as resetting passwords, providing basic access to staff, understanding what Active Directory is uh, from a very, very basic perspective. How to create a user. Let's say a new user starts in a business, creating their account in AD, assigning them specific permissions to a file server, giving them relevant access to an email, to distribution list in an email, uh, perhaps creating their, their basic profile on their computer, installing some basic software on a computer. But most commonly, they're not going to be leaving the comfort of their desk. Again, it depends on the role, depends on the company, but generally a level one person is going to be sitting from their desk and answering either the phone calls or tickets that are coming in from a ticketing system. So I mentioned phone calls of somebody ringing up asking for help desk or IT support, but they also may have a ticketing system, right? A system where somebody logs a ticket by sending an email or they log into some sort of an IT Uh, ticketing portal, support portal, and they put in their query there around what sort of assistance they need from an IT perspective. That will then get triaged or moved into a particular queue that the level one person reviews and tries to fix the issue. They will do their best to fix the issue. If they cannot fix it, 
they will escalate it or hand it over or assign it to somebody who is in a more senior position. Generally, a level one person won't get involved in server side technologies. So they're not gonna be dealing with servers and networking and storage systems and things of that nature. They would escalate that up to a level two or a level three. So what is a level two person? Now, a level two could have uh, varied titles now. We're looking at a support engineer, an IT support analyst, a desktop administrator, a desktop engineer. There could be many, many titles that sort of fall under level two. It's level two because they're an escalated or a higher level up from a level one. Level two people generally have come from a level one position. They started off as a level one, and then over some time, they built up their skills in IT, and then now have moved into a level two position. Some people may already be pretty technical enough where they could perhaps jump into a level two position straight away and skip level one. Really, really depends on the individual and perhaps the company as well. But a level two person now deals a lot more directly with the end user or with the customer by not only providing an escalation from level one, but sometimes now going out onto the floor, actually going and seeing people directly, working with their desktops, with their phones, uh, with all of their, their devices, their IT devices that they have on their desk, installing software, installing hardware, opening up computers, doing troubleshooting, installing new hardware, you know, installing new RAM and hard drives and things like that into a desktop, into a laptop. Remote management as well, so they don't, don't have to necessarily go to their desk, but they could use remote management tools, such as, you know, you've got SCCM, you've got Jamf, you've got TeamViewer uh, and others, where you can actually then log into people's computers remotely. And of course, they're gonna be looking at their ticketing system. Uh, what I generally would recommend anybody who's in level two or any business who has a level two, level one, level two sort of hierarchy is that the level two person is the escalation point from level one. So the end users generally would not call through directly to a level two person or a level or an or end user would not log a ticket and that ticket be assigned directly to a level two person. It would go via the level one person first. The level one person would get the ticket, would get the phone call, and if they can't diagnose and troubleshoot and fix the issue or, or serve the request that is being requested of them, it will then get moved up to the level two person who will then perform their version of troubleshooting, which should be a little bit more advanced, a little bit more technical. They've got a lot more knowledge, a lot more years behind them in, in you know troubleshooting to then be able to then go and assist the end user. Now, what's really good for a level two person is if they're across multiple technologies from an operating system perspective as well. So having good skills in not only Windows, which is I think is elementary for somebody to have skills in Windows, Windows 10 being the current model, but also in Mac OS, knowing how to troubleshoot Windows, learning how to troubleshoot Mac OS, how to get these computers running optimally, making sure that there's antivirus, making sure that they're patched, making sure that they're running at top, top speed. They can be installing software onto these computers to troubleshoot issues, to diagnose issues, to do uh, basic speed tests and things like that. There's some great ones available for Windows and for Mac OS. Uh, two that I use are Clean My PC, Clean My Mac, level two people that I know in many industries use those. If you are interested, you can pick those up right in my description. Um, they're very, very cool and they will help people who are in a level two position. They can also be involved in some basic server administration support. So now this is not necessarily a level three server administrator, but a level two person could be responsible for some basic administrative work on server infrastructure, logging into these servers, installing server software, uh, diagnosing when there's an issue on the server from a very, very basic level, responding to alerts and, and monitoring these servers as well to make sure that they're running healthy, perhaps performing some basic patching on specific servers. Now the level two person, of course, needs to be a little bit more um, technically driven from a level one. So having good understanding around networking, you know, how to connect computers together on the network, how to perform basic troubleshooting on a network, knowing basic commands in a command line. So, you know, knowing how to ping a server, knowing how to do a trace route between a PC one and a PC two. Perhaps if a PC is having issues connecting to the network, 
learning how to troubleshoot and diagnose multiple reasons why that computer could be having issues on the network. Similarly to a level one person, level two is also gonna be involved with things like Active Directory, So, but now it's a little bit more advanced. Uh, they're now going in and actually doing a little bit more advanced you know, things within AD. They could be also involved, as I said, with servers. So they're gonna be adding uh, servers into AD. They could be now dealing with creation of um, security groups uh, within Active Directory. So adding particular users to particular security groups and granting security groups to a file server where a file service permission structure is created. We then move to a level three. So what is a level three? Well, we define level one, we define level two. Well, level three is now an escalation up from the previous levels being level one and level two. Level three, again, has a lot of different titles. There's, there's different sorts of titles depending on uh, the company, depending on the exact skill set that a level three person has. Generally, a level three person will have either a lot of skills that are level three oriented or be specialized in a specific area, specific technology within level three. Generally, you're gonna find systems people, system administrators, system engineers. You're gonna find network administrators, network engineers. You're gonna find even perhaps storage people. Now we're gonna be covering these from a very, very high level, but if you are interested in learning more specifically the differences between a systems engineer and a network engineer, do check out that video right up there uh, where I'll go into a lot more detail specifically about those two roles. So a systems administrator, systems engineer, is now gonna be involved solely, really, primarily on the server technologies, on servers and systems. Uh, Active Directory, but now even from a higher level, dealing with domains, dealing with Active Directory domains and domain trusts, domain controllers, DNS, DHCP, working with building servers, you know, commissioning servers, troubleshooting servers that are a little bit more detailed and a little bit more um, uh, technical than other sorts of servers that may be supported under a level two person. Uh, virtualization, managing and administrating all the virtualization technologies. VMware, Hyper-V, managing and administrating all of the cloud technologies, AWS and Azure and others, uh, responsible for backups of those servers, responsible for antivirus, responsible for the security of those servers, responsible for perhaps even storage such as SAN and NAS. Uh, that could be the role of a systems administrator or systems engineer. You then also got the network equivalent of the systems guys. These are now network administrators, network engineers that are now responsible for the network. They're gonna be looking at network switches, network routers, firewalls, security of the network, making sure that the network is configured and running as smoothly as possible, that uh, you know the, the routes are correct, that network A, network B can talk to each other. Perhaps if a company has multiple sites, making sure that the network traffic can flow from one site to another over specific routes, over specific tunnels, configuring things such as VPN, configuring things such as QoS, which is quality of service, and just the overall network management of the entire network, that there's no bottlenecks and that it's uh, running at its best, best performance. And then we did mention storage engineer. Um, again, it depends on the company, but the storage person may be just solely involved with storage technologies. They're now gonna be involved with just SAN and NAS technologies, perhaps even backups as well. But generally, it depends on the company. Uh, that role can also be merged and, and taken on by a systems uh, engineer or systems administrator as well. Now, of course, they need to be uh, heavily involved in data centers, in comms rooms, in server rooms. So going into these rooms, racking, stacking, cabling, labeling, uh, all of the equipment that's in there, troubleshooting that equipment that's in there, making sure that it's all running healthy. And then of course, if, if a company has their own server in their own comms room, you know, th there's relevant security in those rooms, there's relevant, you know, CCTV, there's air conditioning, there's fire systems, making sure that all of that is secure and all, it's, all of it is running well. So that's an overview of level one, level two, level three. And as I said, it depends on the company because some companies may not be able to afford a level one, a level two, and a level three person. So some companies will have one or two IT people that are responsible for all of this. And that may be you. You're watching this and you go, well, I do all of that. Uh, well, 
there you go, it's pretty common. I do have a whole bunch of more videos that go into a lot more detail about all of these. Please do check those out. I've got playlists that sort of focus on the different roles and responsibilities of people within IT, so do check that out right up there. Other than that, please uh, comment below. Let me know who you are. Let me know what you're doing. What, what is your role in IT? Perhaps you're in one of these levels and you want to move up to the next one. Whatever it may be, I love it when you comment and uh, you can let me know what is going on in your world in the IT space. Please do like this video and as always, subscribe, click on that bell so that you don't miss any of my video releases. Thank you so much for spending the time. I really, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.